mid-October and the weather's definitely changed now. The leaves have gone in less than a week. Everything's become really beautiful, really autumnal. And this northeasterly wind is cutting through me. And on a little lake like this, although they like a bit of wind because they don't get it often, apart from this direction really, I just know that they're going to be sat out there in the protection of all those pads, wind over the top of them. They're getting the sun still. You can see it's all glassy in the center of the pads there. I reckon they're, I reckon they're sat out there right now. So I'm going to put a rod out just for an hour. Um, it's a lake of two halves this, so you've got to do your bit. And especially this time of year, they're not showing during the day. You know, you might hear them at night booming out in the middle of the night and all that caper. But during the day, it's very quiet. The color's quickly dropping out of it. I reckon they're set out there. Well, I think it's, what's it, Thursday now? I think I was here last week on a Friday or a Saturday night and I put half a bag of bait out there when I left. Right about there. I guess it's been an hour and it feels like an hour. Let me tell you, it's absolutely bitter and I'm not cut out for this caper anymore. Um, we've sat here and had a look. I'd seen one this morning looking through the channel from my swim at the other end where I was sat watching. Um, and while we've been here, we've seen one in the pads. I knew they were there and as we stood here, one's flopped out. Um, but it's Arctic and I need a cup of tea. It's, it's so cold, it's giving me headache. So we're gonna go around the other side out the wind for a bit, um, make a cup of tea. And, uh, and have a look at the other side though. needed. Lovely. God, I tell you, it's good to get out of that bloody cold. It was <laughs> freezing around the other side, but it's a lake of two halves. And uh, for a little, it's only a very small lake, but really, really mature. So it's got massive great trees all around us, apart from on one side, which is bordered by a field. So it gets the Norvalies and only the Norvalies. So for a little lake that doesn't get a lot of wind, despite the fact it's a cold wind, it's worth investigating, which is why I went round to the other side of the lake for a look. Anyway, although we saw a carp there in the pads where I thought they were probably hiding, there is a lot of carp in here for the size of the lake. So we came back round here out of the wind and what a change, eh? I've been able to take my snood off, my jacket off, sat here. We're still getting the wind in this corner, but this is the deeper half of the lake and it just looks so much more inviting. The fact that you can sit here without a coat on says enough to me. So we're gonna, uh, I've plopped the rods out only for a short while, and we're gonna sit here and do pretty much what we were doing over the other side of the lake, just have a watch for an hour or so and see if anything happens. I've always loved the autumn. I love being outside, you know, the, you, you get the clearer nights, fresher nights, that's what I really love. I like being in a warm sleeping bag on those really cold, fresh nights. And I, every year I look forward to autumn immensely, immensely. But the flip side to that is, you know, with modern carp fishing, pressured lakes and stuff, um, autumn carp fishing isn't what it was. In fact, it can be really frustrating and testing, to say the least, on a lot of places these days. Um, you know, we feed the carp great bait, year round now and for much of the year they eat an awful lot of it and it gets to the point in autumn where like the temperatures are dropping quick and those fish are full they sort of built up for the winter earlier than they used to if that makes sense um, so it's never easy these days and that period that we're in now where it's absolutely beautiful and just delightful to be out can also be really testing on the angling front Well, now I've decided that I'm gonna stay put here. It's a nicer view. It's a little bit off the wind, a bit calmer, a little bit warmer. Um, 
we saw something, or I saw something down to my left earlier on this afternoon, moved a lot of water, it was obviously a carp. Um, last night, um, there was fish in this area of the lake, so I'm gonna stay put. Even though we've seen one up the other end, and on a lake like this, it's when you're the only person fishing, wherever you are, <laughs> the fish usually aren't. They're wherever you're not. Um, and I'm really conscious of that at this time of year, but I'm staying put. There's a lot of roach in this lake, a lot. So any chaff and little light bits of pellet and sweet corn, all the stuff that you'd like to be using, really has got a very short shelf life on the bottom. So um, I need something that's gonna stay in the swim overnight. And that is boilies. So I've got like a small bag of krill active. I'm not gonna go mad. I'm gonna put 20 or 30 whole ones and a few halves. Um, there's a little channel down to my left here, a gap between the island and the bank. And the other side of that is all pads all the way up the margin. And, uh, I've been here in the summer, it's proven to be a really, really good area. But more so in the winter, you know, last winter I came in here a couple of times and uh, the water's quite deep here, sheltered from the cold winds, blah, 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 you get the picture. It was always a really good area. So I'm going to stay put because I think there's a chance here tonight, but I'm going to nip round and just put a few of these in by hand very closely over the rig. It's, well, couldn't get more simple, could it? Even though it's coming into autumn now, the leaves are dropping, the, plant, the pads are starting to die back. It's a still water, do you know what I mean? It's established and old, and uh, it only gets wind from one direction, which unfortunately is from the north, and which is what we've got now. Um, so it only gets cold wind, um, which isn't great, is it? Like, you know, but this bank, this bank, if you like, this corner up to the other corner, this is their main bit of the lake. This is where everything goes on. They usually live in the channel and they're one side or the other. Everything's perfect for this swim and for this time of year. So I'm just literally just trying to get a drop because the water's been so low. The spots that I caught them at earlier on in the year before the lockdown, last year I should say, or this year rather, um, were what, probably two foot deeper. Um, so I'm hesitant to fish on those areas now with it, you know, six degrees last night, um, five degrees tonight, lots of cold rain and a cold wind. I feel a little bit happier in slightly deeper water. So I'm gonna have a little lead around off the bush a bit more and try and find something more in the five, maybe five, six foot range. I'm more comfortable at that depth at this time of year. That's nice there. Look at how clean that is, beautiful. That'll do me, I'll fish off the front of the bush and a fit, bit further down. Um, I'm fishing them really locked up anyway. Um, I've got a drop there, probably four and a half to five feet. It's quite a way away from the bank. That's the sort of depth I was fishing in before, right in the cove. Um, you have to take all this stuff into account, don't seem a lot. And most of the time, even I wouldn't notice the water depth to that extent. Um, but as soon as you put a lead out there, you remember, I think, oh, I'm sure it was deeper than that. Yeah, it was probably 18 inches to two foot deeper than that. So. I've come out onto the tip of the bush now. I'm getting a deeper drop. There's a bar runs off the island. Like, yeah, it's all looking good. It looks good for the night ahead. I'm pretty confident on that rod now. Um, I'm not gonna go mad. And literally I got a drop then, pulled it, it's ever so clean. Um, I'm just gonna put a bottom bait rig there with just a few boilies around it. Um, and hopefully that'll get us a bite. I never know what I'm going to be faced with and because my angling is so vastly different I, ne I literally never know the baiting situation I'm going to be faced with so I try to carry a little bit of everything um, just like I've bought here for this trip I've got a small bag of boilies a little bucket with some krill powder and a few pellets and corn mixed up you know just something to put a little bit of smell in the water but not a lot of food um, I also bring a pot of pop-ups 
at least one pot of pop-ups and a pot of bottom baits and also some alternative hook baits my favorite being pepper army it's not a secret i love that the high fat content is at odds with cold weather fishing but it's so good as a hook bait uh, for many reasons because it gets paler as time goes on in the water it's quite slow sinking it's got quite a lot of buoyancy because of its fat and oil content um, and I like to ring the changes but I can't do it properly if I haven't got the right bits with me and all of those things are essential. Well, it's a lovely evening isn't it? Oh yeah, it's lovely that. That'll keep me warm this evening. I don't know about autumn, it seems like it's gone straight to winter and bloody freezing. And to be honest, I was starting to lose hope. Like for a lake with a big stock like this, you know, the weather's really smacked them back. And I was starting to, you know, starting to question whether there was a bite in it at all. I was fishing at the other end of the lake last night. It got to about nine o'clock. And because it's a lake of two halves, essentially, I had to come up here and check. Bearing in mind, when I first walked into this swim yesterday, I looked out there and thought, I bet they're out in them pads. And we fished for an hour, didn't get nothing, but we did see one just clip the surface in the middle of the pads and it was weighing on my mind all afternoon back in the other swim. We were set up super comfortable and I had all the kit around us, but it wasn't to be. And at nine o'clock, I made a pretty bold decision considering we'd had a lovely dinner and a glass of wine. I said, Dan, sorry, mate, I've got to make a move. We up sticks, move round. It was pretty painless to be fair, it took about an hour. And anyway, a second it got light enough to see, good angling practice dictates I should have recast because I cast out in the dark, which I did. I reflicked it, it went down beautiful in a clear bit. I left it. And while we're sat there, <laughs> I've been rewarded for all the hard work with this cracking mirror. He's a real lovely one. And he's already got cold spots on him from this recent weather. Can you believe it? Anyway. I'll spin him around and show you his other side because he is an absolute belter and bloody hell, he gave me a right old tussle, he nearly pulled me rod in. But yeah, just, reserve, just rewards, eh, for a bit of graft and keeping the faith. Wicked. We weren't just rewarded, we got a real belter, do you know what I mean? I'm really happy to see such a lovely carp on such a bloody freezing morning. The leaves are coming down around me. I don't know if there'll be another chance in it. I think that might be being a bit greedy. But do you know what? I'm happy with that. Very happy with that. Ah, autumn fishing. It's the bollocks, I tell you. I love it.